Hello guys, Strabo here and welcome to another video. Today we're going to be doing a stock analysis on Foot Locker as a possible undervalued stock. Uh, the stock has just been getting clobbered recently, especially with the news from Nike saying that they're not going to like fully pull all the shoes from their stores. They're going to downsize the amount of shoes that they, sh that they sell at Foot Locker so they can do more like direct consumer uh, you know interactions so basically you know stock took a big hit from that uh, that's what this pretty much uh, vertical decline was from down here market cap of 2.8 billion dollars pretty much like with rounding so small market cap company is pretty much anything that's below 2 billion dollars i mean it is a little bit above that but like for this company just to be acquired you know through acquisition like this is like pennies on the dollar i mean it depends on like what kind of company does it you know uh, the vf corporation which is like you know a company we'll talk about at the moment like as in what they do it's just it has to do with clothing but the free cash flow i mean they don't have enough for it but if they like you know were to pile up some ca some cash and take on uh take uh the recent free cash flow with it, which i think was about like a billion dollars they could be almost uh acquire foot locker you know pay basically take on some debt issue some shares that's what they basically all do at once when the uh, companies acquire other companies so like it's, it's possible for a company like this all right so we're gonna get straight into revenue growth basically over the last five years um 7.7 7 billion up to 8.9 billion but as you can he see here it's like you know kind of flat and then had like a big jump in uh, 2022 or at least trailing 12 months i don't know why it's saying 2022 and looking at this right now i did not know Foot Locker was around for this long there's no way they did nine billion dollars in 1992 this definitely had to be like some other company what what Foot Locker has been around since 1986 what the fudge all right now we're gonna be looking at their net income growth so they went from 2017 you just gotta go there 664 million up to 892 million but look at this like i mean it's just inconsistent revenue with what's going on here next we're gonna be look at looking at their pe ratio to see if it's under 15 and right now their pe ratio is 3.3 which is very 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 cheap next we're going to be looking at the company's uh, price to sales ratio and compare that to their sector average so their price to sales ratio is 0.3 which is very very low so the industry average is 4.8 which is wow Foot Locker is like very, very low compared to, yeah, their price, the price of sales of their industry. So holy moly, squawkadilly dilly. Next, we're going to be looking at the company's retained earnings to see if they're growing in their retained earnings. So from $2 billion up to $2.9 billion, which is pretty, pretty good. And looking at their total common equity, went from $2.5 billion up to $3.2 billion. Next, we're going to be checking the solvency of the company. So if we look at their total current assets, is $2.3 billion. I'm guessing, yep, I'm guessing a lot, obviously a lot of that is going to be in inventory. And their current liabilities is uh, $1.75 which is pretty good. And now we're going to be looking at their current and quick ratio to see the math for us. So obviously the quick ratio is going to be quite low, obviously because, you know, inventory take up a large, a large portion of their current assets. And the debt to equity ratio is uh, pretty low. It's just sitting at 0.14. Now we're going to be looking at the company's total debt. So the total debt is $3.3 billion and their net debt is $2.5 billion. So now as I'm, getting, I'm getting this right. They do not have any cash and ca enough cash and cash equivalents to pretty much pay off all their debt. Next, we're going to be looking at their shares outstanding to see if they're buying back shares and they obviously are. Let me just calculate to see what that percentage difference looks like. So that is a decrease of 18.6% from uh, February 2018 up to uh, the last reported shares outstanding, which is pretty good. Next, we're going to be looking at their free cash flow to see if, you know, they have free cash flow. Okay, so from 2017 up to, I guess, trailing 12 months, their free cash flow has gone from uh, 550 million up to 457 million or well, actually down looking at if we just compare to 2021 it has gone up if we basically just do a price to free cash flow looking at the 903 million dollars we're gonna get a value of so that has the price of free cash flow of 3.04 which is pretty nuts i'm gonna calculate their five-year average free, free cash flow and then have a look so the price of free cash flow looking at it for the average over the last five years is 4.42 which once again is very very low so if we actually take their free cash flow right now of 903 uh, million dollars and multiply it let's say by a pe ratio of 10 that pretty much bring it to obviously a market cap of nine billion dollars even if we just look at their um free, free cash flow for 2021 and multiply that by five we get a market cap of 5.5 uh, sorry 4.5 billion which damn man this company's freaking low in price holy fudge okay so now we're gonna be looking at their cash flow statement to see what they're doing exactly with their free cash flow so barely selling any property print and equipment uh they made an acquisition for billion dollars i'm actually gonna check that out in one sec okay so foot locker acquired wss and i actually have no idea what that is one sec okay so wss is a uh shoe retailer investing in marketable securities issuing a little bit of debt repaying back their debt barely issuing any stock but obviously you're buying back more shares than they are issuing and they are paying a dividend man okay so i did know this prior to looking at the video because obviously the stock had to take my uh sorry the stock obviously had to catch my atten attention and i was so surprised to see that this company was paying a dividend man the dividend yield right now is i think four percent right okay so now we're going to be looking at the coupon rate on the bonds that for locker issued so this one's already matured but it had a coupon rate of 8.5 percent which is considerably higher than the dividend 
dividend yield, so uh, stockholders aren't obviously fully being compensated for the risk compared to the debt, uh, debt holders. And once again, as a common stockholder, you bear all the risk as like if, as if you were running the business yourself. You are pretty much the last person in line for when it comes to like full liquidation of a company. Um, when it comes to like you know debt holders, they're obligated to get the money that you know they gave to the company because it's under contract. Like hey yo, I'm borrowing hundred bucks from you and I gave gave you back hundred bucks with interest. I'm, I'm I'm basically you know explaining what a bond is as a shareholder. They don't fracking really owe you anything so you have to be compensated with sorry you have to be compensated with your risk with fracking dividends so let me check this other this next link with cbonds.com like this for a it just looks so weird man like it just show me, shows me no info so i'm guessing this one's you know obviously going to be maturing in uh, 2029 with a coupon rate of four percent so it's not really that big of a difference compared to the dividend yield but you know obviously the higher the better next we're going to be looking at the company's roa roi and roe i can't take it anymore with over five percent so it's going to be now over seven and a half percent for each so looking pretty good right there and now we're going to be looking at the return on invested capital and when it comes to return on invested capital we want to see if it's higher than the weighted average cost of capital so looking here in the past you've had some a uh, uh, nice roic but now it's kind of like you know it dipped in uh, you know okay 2020 makes sense but uh, 2021 didn't really look that good at least it bounced back and i guess 2021 once again what's up with the 2022 but uh, i'm going to go check to see what the rate weighted average cost of capital is so full lockers weighted average cost of capital is about 5.49 percent so even from the uh off year in 2021 it's, it was still higher than the weighted average cost of capital which is very good to see okay so now i'm on the stock in Last tool that was created by everything money and um pretty much looking at their um revenue i, I have a hard time believing even though it's like obviously there that a company like this is making like a billion dollars in revenue i didn't catch this when i was uh, recording the video but for the big jump in revenue it was because of the acquisition they made of wss full docker barely makes any acquisitions i look at you know uh, the cash flow statement throughout the years. Uh, the last big one that they made was in 2004, a foot action. Uh, they made a, a couple other uh, acquisitions, but they were like 18 and like $2 million. So I didn't even look in to see what those actually were. And also I didn't do it in this video either, but you have to go to the 10K and see what the same store sales are looking like to make sure that they're growing through, you know, same store sales. Obviously it's not a bad thing if they, you know, get more stores, but if they have to implement stores just to get growth and the same store sales are declining, then that's not really a good sign. So like, I'm going to go one, two, at 3% revenue growth to make it super super conservative profit margin i'll go seven eight nine percent free cash flow margin i'll go five six seven percent pe you know what i mean it's obviously cheap right now so i might as well just keep it cheap i'll go four five and six and see what happens with that same with the price of free cash flow and the dividend yield was what 3.3 percent so i'll go with a 12 and a half percent uh turn it should be 13 percent but we'll just see what these numbers look like oh my god are you freaking kidding me right now i think this is like the first time uh you know out of the videos i've been making where the stock analyzer tool has given me all greens when it comes to the assumptions so holy fudge and keep in mind yesterday this company is at like what 27 bucks a share like fudge this is absolutely crazy okay so now i'm on excel we're gonna basically put in the revenue percentage numbers so oh my bad two and three percent so basically to go from nine billion up to uh 9.8 billion is really just not that much in general and pretty much looking at the high end of 12 billion dollars i mean oh my god i have a hard time believing that this company is making like nine billion dollars in revenue in the first place man i'm actually gonna go back to the stock analyzing tool and see what happens if i actually put negative numbers okay i'm gonna go negative three negative two and then negative one and i'm gonna put the same numbers as before and then we'll go with 13 percent return okay so now we're kind of like getting in the red because you know three percent negative every year is you know pretty bad so if you believe these numbers like you know when it comes to like nine billion dollars like kind of grasp in your head that companies like this like this is doing nine billion in revenue and think that they can go up i mean this is something to look further into i'm actually going to show you now what the intrinsic value of the company looks like okay so now looking at the intrinsic value of a locker we get an intrinsic value of about 41 dollars a share with the 50 percent margin of uh, safety it's going to be about like you know 21 bu bucks this is actually pretty crazy so basically what this uh, calculation is doing is basically looking at the growth in common equity takes the average uh, earnings per share and the average pe ratio and see where the company should be trading at this is pretty much you know a speculative um, assumption but even if you like go back to like a, a, a pe of like you know 6.9 that's obviously like a doubling in the price of the company bro like this is pretty undervalued yeah i pretty much got nothing else to say um i don't know if i'm forgetting anything but yeah i'm gonna look into the acquisition as well see what what's up with them and uh yeah thanks for watching guys uh get to 100 subs so i can get to uh, so i can do face cam and things like that but uh yeah i'll see you guys later